Welcome to Living Hope. In today's message, True Religion, Joel Hill shares that Jesus receives our acts of love, compassion, and generosity to others as a fragrant offering of worship to him. It's a joy to talk about Jesus, talk about the gospel with you guys. Um, he's, uh, he mentioned healing the sick. Uh, the uh, podcast on healing the sick, Jesus did, did say, heal the sick. Uh, he didn't tell us to ask him to heal the sick. He said, you heal them. And he gave us the Holy Spirit that he himself had. He gave us the authority that he had from the Father. He sent us out. When we operate in submission under his authority, we can also exercise his authority because it's his power and authority moving through us. Um, I remember I met this woman on the street. I bought a bottle of water from her and I uh, felt something in my foot and I thought maybe this is the Holy Spirit trying to communicate something to me. And so I, I asked her, does your, does your foot hurt? And she said, yes. How did you know? Do you have some kind of sixth sense? I said, no, it's not a sixth sense, but would it be all right if I touched your foot? She said, sure. So I touched her foot and I didn't say anything. I simply touched it for just a couple of seconds. And I said, how does it feel now? And she said, it feels cold inside. And then she and her friends started freaking out a little bit. What, what is going on? How are you doing this? And I said, well, get up and walk around. How does it feel? So she got up and walked around. She said, it doesn't hurt at all. And uh, I said, what was the problem? She said, I had a tumor in my foot. So I told her, could you feel it with your hand? She says, yeah. So I said, try to find it now. So she reached down. She's grabbing her. She can't find the tumor. It's completely disappeared out of her foot. And she and her friends are really freaking out at this point. How did you do this? Are you some kind of like supernatural? What are you? Are you even a person? Are you some kind of supernatural being? What is this? And I said, I said, this is what happened. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, went around healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, and he offered himself on the cross to take away the sin of the world. When we believe in him, our old self dies with him. And then after three days, he came back from the dead and is alive now. And when that happened, those of us who believe in him were resurrected into a new kind of life in union with him. And so the spirit of Jesus Christ lives in me when I believe in him. And the same Jesus who walked the earth 2,000 years ago, that's why when I touched your foot, your tumor disappeared. And the whole group of them wanted to know Jesus after that. You know, hallelujah. Some of us put more faith in prayer than we put in Jesus. Right? Some of us put more faith in faith than we put in Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, um, I had an opportunity, uh, what was the last time I was here? Two, two years ago, approximately. And uh, December, two years ago. Uh, so some things have happened since then, so I'm going to share a couple of stories. There's much more has happened since then than I could possibly share uh, in a day, really, but, uh, you know, through the grace and mercy of God, we've had the joy of seeing countless miracles and people coming to the Lord and amazing acts of the Holy Spirit, both in America and outside of America. The kinds of miracles that I've seen overseas, uh, all the types of miracles, cancer healed, paralytics walking, deaf ears opening, blind eyes opening, I saw happen in the United States first, actually, in church and outside the church. Um, so Jesus doesn't change based on geography. If we have simple faith in who he is, his power, his presence is available for us, for our own lives, but also for other people. Um, but in my, in my life, in my calling, I do have an opportunity to go to some interesting places. Jesus is the, Jesus is the good shepherd who, le who leaves the 99 to go after the one who's walked away. And uh, so there's this opportunity, this happened since I was here last, but um, to go to a tribal area, very, very far off in the jungle. It's a vast area that has no roads, um, and it's only tribes, rebels, and terrorists living in this, in this jungle area. It's a very dangerous place. Uh, there's a war happening there. 
and I had an opportunity to travel there by helicopter to one of the villages. Before I went there, I had a vision of myself laying hands on someone for healing. And so I knew that that was an assignment that the Lord had for me in that place. And the, this tribe is actually still, pro, still practices animal sacrifice and human sacrifice and witchcraft. And the witch doctor is the chief of the tribe. There are still places like this in the world. And so when our helicopter landed, I asked the people first, who here needs healing? And they said, the witch doctor does. So I said, awesome. Can I pray for him? And they said, yes, yes, we can go to, we can take you to his house. So we went and found his hut and he'd been bedridden for the past three years, waiting to die, couldn't walk. And he was very hostile to, to Christians, to Jesus, to the gospel. And, uh, but that day something changed and I asked if I could pray for him. He said, yes. And, uh, as I put my hand on him, this shadow passed through his eye. His eyes turned black. And the Holy Spirit said, share the story of the gospel, of how evil came into the world and the blood sacrifice that wiped it out. As this man believes in blood sacrifice, he's the one leading the animal sacrifices, the human sacrifices. He believes in the power of a blood sacrifice, but he doesn't know the power of the blood sacrifice of Jesus, the ultimate one-time sacrifice. So I shared with him that story of how evil came into the world through sin and Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection. And he surrendered to Jesus. He gave his life to Jesus. He repented of his witchcraft, got rid of all of his accessories. And at that moment, I saw a light come into his eyes and a new energy came into his body. And he got up and was able to walk and move and do things he couldn't do before. And since then, he's been being discipled by the, by the native believers in the tribe. And he's, he's hiking for multiple miles through the mountains. You know, when he was just laying there, unable to move, waiting to die, he's, he has a new life. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus there's nobody like Jesus. There's nobody like Jesus. He will stop at nothing to have the people that his heart desires. He will leave the 99 to go after the one, no matter where they're hidden. And so this is good news for us too, right? Earlier, earlier this year, we were working in a, a very poor area and there was a mute man there. And so the team prayed for him and immediately he got his ability to speak back. As this is happening, Simultaneously, some of the, the folks back in Thailand whom we've been mentoring, um, the believers there, the Thai believers, they were walking in the park and they found a woman who couldn't walk, a crippled woman. They prayed for her in the park. She got up and was able to walk. She was healed. They shared the gospel with her and she gave her heart to the Lord. Simultaneously, two different countries, you know, a mute man speaking, a lame woman walking. Hallelujah. God is good. Um, one, of the women, one, of the, one of the women who prayed for her, uh, she used to be a leader in the local temples there. When she got saved, they hauled two truckloads of idols out of her house. And now she's just on fire for Jesus, passionate for prayer, passionate for evangelism. Um, sees a lot of miracles happening through her life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that is leading into what I would like to share today, which is, you know, in, in our context where we're living, we live in a, in a Buddhist majority area. So there's temples and there's idols. And uh, people go to the temple, this beautiful building, to approach their God or their object of worship. And they have a golden statue in there and they leave offerings in front of the statue and burn incense and pray to the statue. These are false gods and uh, they don't see or hear. They cannot respond. They're made by man and people go in and they pray before the image and give offerings to the image. And uh, this is the far end of what happens when human beings create religion, okay? Man-made religion is our attempt 
to wash ourselves of the wrong we know we've done and to come close to God, whatever God we may believe in, and try to have some kind of hope for a better future or better life after death. Okay, this is man's attempt. Um, and so, you know, in the United States, you also see this. Uh, even in Christianity, you see this, is where it might not be a, a temple and a golden idol, but there's these different ways that man-made religion tries to put God far away, right? Puts him inside this house, puts him inside this thing. You have to go through these ceremonies to approach him. This is what man-made religion does. But the truth of the gospel is that he is close, right? He is close to us. And, um, you know, man-made religion, it's like it dehumanizes worship and true religion. And I'm going to share about what I mean by that. In Genesis 1, or sorry, in Exodus chapter 20, uh, God commanded the people not to make any carved image. All right? Do not carve an idol. Okay. Why is this? Man, first of all, God is a jealous God, and he will not have us worshiping anyone but himself. He's the only one worthy. But also, why doesn't he want us making carved images of himself that would represent him. And we can leave an offering before that as an act of worship to him. The reason is he already made his own image in mankind. He, create, he said, let us make man in our image. So he created by his own will and power, his image in humanity. All right. Um, God does not live in a temple made with human hands. There was a period where he did, right? But that was not his ultimate desire, was to live in a, a man-made temple where people can go and find him in that building. The believers are the temple of God. This is the temple that he always desired. Again, humanity. And so you see, humanity is both the image of God and the temple of God, we who are believers, Right? Anyone can be the image bearer of God because they're a person who is created by him. You become his temple when you believe in him. So let's look at Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Yeah. So Jesus, you know, his disciples are saying, or the righteous in this picture are saying, you know, surely I would remember you in prison. Surely I would remember seeing you naked. When did this happen? You know, but uh, Jesus says, whatever you did to them, you did to me. And so Jesus, it's, it's as though he stands inside our fellow man. He stands inside the poor. He identifies with humanity to such an extent that he takes our treatment of our fellow man as treatment of himself. He stands inside the poor. He stands inside the hungry and accepts our gifts to them as gifts to himself. Man-made religion wants to bring you to a building where God, where God lives and have you place an offering before an image. But in God's religion, okay, true, pure, undefiled religion, our act of worship looks like serving one another. We're not serving an idol. We're not serving an image made of stone or gold or something like that. We're serving one another. 
uh, in James. James chapter 1, 27. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. And this, this doesn't, I, I, I would propose that this is not limited to orphans and widows, but it's really to, to anybody who's in need. Um, it certainly includes orphans and widows, but it's, it's to anyone who's in need. And this is God's idea of religion, is that we would be the temple and that we would give to him by giving to one another, right? When we feed the hungry, it's an act of love and worship. In, in our ministry, we're providing food for a lot of people who are starving in a war zone. And we have two trucks. And I went through this process of, of buying these trucks and, you know, researching and finding the, the, uh, the, the best truck for the, for the right amount of money and then modifying them to, to be able to haul heavy loads off-road and uh, registration and insurance and all these things that I was doing with it. And every step of the way, it was worship to me. It was, I, I'm doing insurance, and I'm saying, Jesus, I love you, because I know I'm going to take that truck, and I'm using it to haul food to the poor. And when I haul food to the poor, I'm giving it to Jesus, because he is in them, he is with them, and I'm giving it to him as an act of love out of my own, out of my own heart. This is an act of worship, right? And so all those details... Right? And you can take this idea and apply it to so many things in life. Those are you who are parents. If you're around people at all, right? If you give a, a cup of cold water, this is what Jesus said, to one of these little ones in my name, right? <laughs> you're giving it to him. It's an act of worship. You say, I love you, Jesus. I want to worship you, Jesus. I want to give to you, Jesus. And this is how Jesus receives love. Some of us feel like we don't need to, and this is true, we don't need to work to earn his love, right? You come into salvation. You come into his kingdom by grace. It is a gift, and you experience it through faith, right? Period. You cannot work for his love, However, you show love to him. You give love to him by working. And you're not doing it to get something for yourself, but you are expressing your love. You're giving to him through your works. That is how he receives love. It is an immature Christian who says, I don't need to work for God's love, and so therefore I'm just going to sit around and not do anything. I've got it all by grace. Hallelujah. There is something more. It's called relationship right? Where we love him, we care about his heart. And so we give to him in the way that he receives love. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the kind of God he is. Remember, there's a story of Mary of Bethany. She broke open the jar of costly perfume and poured it on the feet of Jesus. You remember this story? She poured it on the feet, the feet of Jesus, and that jar of perfume was worth roughly a year's wages. And some of the people in the room said, this is outrageous. This is too extravagant. We could have taken this perfume and sold it and given the money to the poor. Now, the one who said that was Judas, and he was stealing from the treasury, and that's why he wanted them to sell it and get the money, because he wanted a, a cut. But there is this, there's this, th this thought of why this extravagance on Jesus uh, when we could be selling this and giving it to the poor. And Jesus' response was fascinating. He said, leave her alone. You'll always have the poor. All right? So in other words, she has a limited time, a limited time opportunity to love me, Jesus, to love Jesus in this way, directly, pouring perfume on Jesus himself was a limited time offer. She had to take advantage of it in that way. But he said, you'll always have the poor. Okay, I used to read that and think, well, poverty is never going to be solved. That's what he means. There's always going to be poor people. I don't think that's what he meant. I think he's, I, what I see now is, He's saying, let her worship me in this way now while I'm here in the flesh. Because after I'm gone, you're going to worship me through the poor. 
right? This is how we worship. Giving, visiting the sick, healing the sick even is an act of worship. Visiting people who are in prison, visiting those who are alone, caring for orphans and widows, caring for our neighbor who's in need, our family members, our own children, parenting them well, providing for them. If we just, there's a little heart shift that happens and all these mundane tasks that we're faced with in life suddenly become an offering. Jesus, I love you. I'm going to make dinner for my kids. I'm going to feed my kids. Jesus, I love you. I'm giving you this plate of rice and chicken or whatever. This is, this is for you, Jesus, as I'm giving it to my kids, you know. Hallelujah. Because he is close. He is close. And this is God's religion. This is God's idea of religion, is that he would dwell among us and receive worship through us as we love and serve one another and our fellow man. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So I would like to pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we see you right now. We see you. We see your heart. We see who you are, that you are close, that you care about people. And uh, I just pray for that shift to happen in each one of us through our, in the mundane tasks and also maybe the, the grand gestures across the world as well to give to you offerings of love through serving the poor, through serving our fellow man. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. And uh, right now, if there's anybody who's sick or in need somehow, maybe you're watching on the live stream, if there's somebody near you, okay, let them know. Put your hand up. This is what I want to do. If you're sick or in need somehow, just put a hand up. Let the people around you know. If you're watching on the live stream and there's people in your room, let them know. If there's nobody with you or watching the live stream alone, put it in the comments. Okay? I'm sick. I need healing. I'm in need somehow. Right here in this room. If you want prayer, you need to see God move. You need your body to be healed. You've been struggling with depression. you got family issues. Anything. Right? Just tap the person next to you. Let them know. We're about to see God move in this room and on the live stream. Okay? He wants to do it through you. Okay? So reach out and touch them. Say, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, we're going to see God's power and his faithfulness released right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we step out in compassion, even if it's laying hands on the person next to you in church, this is an act of love, not only for them, but for him. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, cancer has to go. Thank you, Jesus. Every kind of deafness, I'm getting deafness. Somebody's deaf uh, or partially deaf deaf, maybe on the live stream, maybe here, I'm not sure. In Jesus' name, ears open right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who is that? I, th- I believe it's the left ear, especially, is, is hard of hearing. Oh, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Who is that? It's hard of hearing. Maybe it's on the live stream. In Jesus' name, ear open. Be healed right now. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus, and honor you as King, as Savior, as Lord, and as friend and brother, God. pray that you would move us with compassion this week as we go out from this place that we would be moved with compassion 
just like you, God. In the name of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.